I never really was into Pokemon, but I have collected them all. I mean, not Pokemon, but X399 motherboards. This is the last one for my collection, at least until more X399 motherboards come out. This is the MSI Meg X399 creation. It is largely credited as the X399 motherboard with the best VRM implementation designed to deliver 500 watts with the best components and all the stuff. I picked mine up at Micro Center because it was on sale. It was $100 off. Couldn't pass it up. Helping a friend do a build, doing some experiments. It's high time we reviewed an X399 motherboard. All right, so what's the rundown on the X399 creation? MSI has uh, a lot of motherboards for a lot of different platforms. I mean, Intel, AMD, X399, X399 is, you know, 16 to 32 cores. The 2950X is my favorite processor in a very long time. Certainly my favorite processor in five years. The 1950X from AMD, the Threadripper 1950X, was a game changer. It literally changed the industry. And the 2950X solves pretty much every shortcoming of the 1950X. It is a wicked fast, basically no compromises CPU. You don't need a motherboard with the ridiculous overkill VRM that the Meg creation has to really let a 2950X stretch its legs. But if you're gonna overclock and you're gonna extreme overclock, having the VRM does help, especially like that second gen Threadripper board because when the Threadripper first gen, like the 1950X, the 1920X, the 1900X, when those CPUs came out, they were designed with, you know, motherboards were designed around those CPUs. And, you know, AMD being very good about backward compatibility, the 2950X, the 2920X, a new 24 core, 2970, WX and 2990 WX, those are like workstation parts with even more cores, they will work in uh, previous gen motherboards and I've, I've tested that generally that's pretty true although the overclocking varies quite a bit so with a 2990 a 32 core monster we've done overclocking in this channel and you can easily sail past 400 watts on those 2970 wx 2990 wx parts so the the meg creation motherboard delivers vrm that will let you hit that 400 to 500 watt sweet spot, assuming that you can keep the CPU cool, assuming that you want a ridiculous overclock like that. Now, some people are all, all about long-term stability, and there is something to be said for long-term stability because you're running it, the components way under spec, and they're not gonna generate as much heat. And the overall, the system is gonna be pretty stable with, with that stuff, but there's a floor, there's an efficiency floor. Most people don't realize that there's a curve. So even though the VRM is overbuilt, all the components are still on, they're gonna produce heat. And so there's sort of a floor there. If you look at it on power supplies, it's pretty similar. You can look at a PC power supply and it's like, it's 90% efficient, uh, you know, a given power supply would be 90% efficient when it's drawing around, you know, 400 watts, if it's say an 800 watt power supply. And as the, the load goes down, it gets more inefficient. And as the load goes up, it gets more inefficient. And the more inefficient it is, the higher the percentage of the energy that goes to heat production. And so that's kind of true on, Motherboard VRM as well. That said, this is a top-notch implementation in terms of VRM. It'll have no problem with the 2990. You can overclock like crazy. If you do run a 2950, it's not really gonna give you any more clock speed out of a 2950 because AMD does an excellent job bending those and with technologies like the Precision Boost Overdrive. Um, the CPU is basically auto overclocking itself if you're using those features anyway. And as long as you can keep it cool, you're gonna get great performance out of it. And it's not really gonna need 400 watts. Now on the 2990, you can run it like four gigahertz on all cores, 32 cores. That's gonna drink a lot of power. Heat's gonna be an issue. So it's not as true on the 2990 because you get more out of overclocking the 2990, especially if you're using the Linux platform than the 2950. But the 2950 does a great job out of the box balancing single thread or lightly threaded performance and something that could use actually all 16 cores. But that's enough about Threadripper. Let's talk about the features of this motherboard. It's got a pretty good PCI Express layout. It's by 16 by eight by 16 by eight. We've got two M.2 slots that are hidden under this, this heat sink thing. If it were me, I'd probably just take the heat sink off and run without it. But if you do have a heat, if you do have an M.2 that is gonna benefit from having a heat sink, well, there's certainly plenty of thermal mass there 
to take care of that. There is a single PCI Express by one expansion slot right below the video card, which is, you know, or right below the primary by 16 slot, which most people would put a graphics card in, but you could put it in one of the lower slots if you wanted to have a little bit more peripheral IO. Unlike most X399 motherboards, none of these PCI Express lanes are connected through the chipset, which would be PCI Express 2.0 lanes. All of these are wired directly into the CPU. And of course our M.2s are wired directly into the CPU. In terms of fan headers, this motherboard has a plurality of fan headers. We've got four fan headers across the bottom, five if you count the one in the corner, one up here near the bottom of the VRM around the memory, which is great for rear exhaust. And we've got four in the upper quadrant of the motherboard now. In terms of the motherboard actual power plane delivery, we've got two eight pin connectors. A single CPU eight pin connector, of course, can deliver 400 watts, 350, 400 watts, something like that. Two of those will give you 800 watts. There's also an additional Molex connector on the bottom of the motherboard that will provide supplemental power to PCI Express peripherals. If you are running like four graphics cards off this thing, you would be in a situation where uh, each graphics card is drawing 75 watts. But the PCI Express layout makes four graphics cards problematic because this slot being right next to this slot means that you can only run graphics cards that are single slot. I mean, for a workstation card, you know, maybe like the 7100 WX Radeon, I mean, single slot card, it would be fine. But this PCI Express slot layout, maybe not the best if you, if you were gonna try to run four double height peripherals. At the bottom edge of the motherboard, we've got another fan header that's hiding our MSI overclock button knob thing where you can turn it up to 11 and that'll load some presets. Although with Threadripper, I think you'll do a better job sort of finding the sweet spot, not just for your CPU, but also your cooling solution and all the peripherals and stuff that go with that. I mean, depending on what your particular setup is, you'll really have to dial that in. We've got two USB 2 headers, the front panel header, a TPM header, the fan headers I was mentioning before, and you get two external analog temperature inputs, which are included in the box, which is a nice touch. There's actually a lot of accessories in the box. We'll talk about that in a second. Got our RGB header, and of course our front panel audio header. At the front edge of the motherboard, we have one USB type C header, two USB 3.0 front panel headers. So you could have a total of five front panel connections with this motherboard and eight SATA six gigabit per second ports. Some of those are from the CPU, some of those are from the chipset. We also have a physical power and reset button as well as a LED readout for status codes and that sort of thing. It's nice when you're troubleshooting, something's not going right, something's not posting or working or, or whatever. In terms of motherboard layout, with the VRM, it is an unusual situation. And so memory compatibility was one of my concerns because most Threadripper motherboards will lay the VRM out to the side, generally away from the memory, not really a big deal. The VRM here goes all the way across the top of the motherboard. I myself have had trouble where if I route the 12 volt EPS lines too close to the memory, I can have a hard time achieving higher memory clocks just because the amount of power that the CPU varies and on a particular motherboard, when I had the 12 12 volt connection literally just touching the memory because of the way that it was in the case it was not perfectly stable and i'm not sure if if moving the cable or just something shifted around in the connector but when i relocated that 12 volt connector because i took the motherboard out and put it back on my test bench and it was stable and then i put the motherboard back in the case and it was unstable again and this was repeatable it was an interesting situation not with this motherboard but as a result of that experience i always route the 12 volt cables away from the memory if i possibly can so to help us test that out some a data 3200 megahertz memory so we're going to see how that runs at the rear of the motherboard, we've got 10 USB connections, uh, eight of which are USB 3.0, 3.1, Gen 1, five gigabit per second. Two are USB 3.1, Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second, one of which is a type C. We've also got two Intel gigabit NICs. We've also got a clear CMOS button and a BIOS flash button. The BIOS flash button is important. Now this motherboard came from Micro Center. But very strangely, the motherboard would not post when I first turned it on. And it turned out because it was because it had like a launch day BIOS that somehow didn't support second generation Threadripper CPUs. I don't, I don't know. Um, it didn't post. So I put the latest on a USB stick, flashed it, then everything was fine. Okay. But it still bothered me a little bit. So I flashed the oldest BIOS cause it should support second gen Threadripper. But then we were back to no post. So I flashed it again with the latest BIOS and everything's okay. So if you get a motherboard that doesn't work, just try the, the flash thing. Now, in terms of complaints about this motherboard, really, after testing, I only have two. One, the rear IO shield. As much as this motherboard costs, or normally costs, the rear IO shield, I think, should be built in. It's pretty premium, pretty standard on premium motherboards these days. Second, there's no 10 gig network card. A lot of the other premium Threadripper motherboards from other vendors include an Aquantia NIC or have Aquantia NIC 
uh, having a Quantia NIC built in. We've got dual Intel gigabit here, so I'm gonna have to use one of my expansion slots for a 10 gigabit adapter, which is fine, but for the cost of the motherboard, a solution a little better than dual Intel NICs would have been appreciated. One other note, using SRIOV on the AMD Fire Pro S7150, I couldn't get that to work because of the PCI ROM bar space, but I am working with MSI on that. I'm hopeful we will get that fixed. SRIOV for network cards works fine, but for graphics cards with SRIOV enabled, uh, and you've got an SRIOV graphics card like this one, the system won't post. And the error message seems to be that it's out of PCIe ROM bar space. In terms of Linux support, MSI has been very good about supporting Linux on Threadripper. They generally get the UEFIs up and out the door. Sometimes the UEFI is not fully ready, not fully tested, but from what our users report on the level one forums, MSI has been very good about providing beta or test versions of the UEFI to Linux users that do run into any problems. My experiences with Linux have been great. So we're basically at an A plus situation in terms of Linux support. Now in terms of IOMMU, the IOMMU groups on this motherboard with the latest BIOS are pretty good. You've got pretty good device isolation. Of course, everything that goes through the chipset is gonna be in one IOMMU group, but since all the expansion slots go directly to the CPU, you're in a pretty good situation in terms of IOMMU coverage. Also in the box, you've got this really crazy M.2 MSI Arrow extender. It looks like a graphics card but it's actually a PCI Express by 16 breakout card for four PCI Express by four M.2 interfaces. So if you wanna run some crazy RAID 10 with four M.2s, you can, and it's gonna be insanely fast. I mean, it's a PCI Express by 16 connection to your storage. So you could run that in, the, in this slot and run your graphics card in this slot, and you're using 32 PCI Express lanes just between your graphics card and storage. Sort of a monster system. So if you are thinking about building a system around this motherboard and you're thinking about the 32 core CPU, currently Linux is the best first class experience with that CPU. I just got the Windows Fast Ring update about three days ago. This is uh, basically the end of April, 2019. And I got the Fast Ring update from around the end of April, 2019. And it still doesn't have a fully fixed scheduler that will solve problems with applications like Indigo. There's an improvement but it's not a dramatic improvement. We go from like 2.0 to 2.6, when we should be able to score about 3.0 to 3.1 with the 2990WX Threadripper. Now I'm gonna build a system around this motherboard. I'm helping a colleague put something together. I think it's a bit loud in here. If only it could be quiet. Yes, I'm not really sure. I reached out to be quiet about a question that I had about the Dark Brace Pro 900. So I actually got a Dark Brace Pro 900 Rev 2 and we got to talking about all-in-ones versus tower coolers. And with TR4, you know, there have there are all-in-one coolers for TR4, but there have been some pump problems with them, but like first generation, but then the second generation, I don't know. But Be Quiet actually has a TR4 cooler for Threadripper. So I wanna put this, this is, you know, turn 50 watt TDP. We're not gonna, I mean, it's the Meg creation. We're gonna try this cooler and we're gonna do a build in the Dark Base Pro 900 and we're gonna see how that goes. For that, you're gonna have to wait for the next video. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick review of the MSI Meg X39 creation. I know I'm a little late to the party on the, the motherboard, but hey, it's on sale at Micro Center. Couldn't pass it up. So if you got one of these, there's probably a lot of you, Share pictures, show, your, show off your build in the level one forums. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, I need this kind of horsepower, but I'm a little scared of building a machine. It's really not that bad. It's pretty easy, step by step. People at level one forums will help you. But if you've already built the system, you wanna help some noobs, just take some pictures of your system. Just show it off. I mean, I just like seeing the builds and what crazy stuff people are up to. Got one guy in the forum that's got this crazy unreal setup with Threadripper. Ah, oh, that's, that's a story for another day, but uh, yeah. Level 1 forums. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.